Welcome back to Fearless Training Radio. It's a quarter to 11, and we're going to slow things down with some Luther Vandross, Toto, followed by Van Halen's Why Can't This Be Love. Sit back, sit down in my embrace as we follow through to the Midnight Hour on Raw Knowledge Podcast. All right, welcome back everybody to the Fearless Training Raw Knowledge Podcast. I hope you enjoyed that intro. Spurred on by uh, apparently a little bit of bass in the mic and the evening radio voice, not my own words. Uh, Always trying to improve the audio, but again, different scenarios, different settings. We are getting there. Okay, so I hope everyone had a cracking new year. The last time I spoke to you, if you're keeping up to date with these podcasts, was Christmas. It was still 2020. It is now 2021, the 4th of January, Monday, as I record, as I'm speaking, if you're listening in the future. And once again, I'm doing a solo podcast because, well, it's the new year. And for those of you who want to get away and really get after it, I should say, I've got some tools that I want to share with you. Now, yes, I've got more guests coming. They are all lined up. It's been a interesting time uh, of year with everything that's been going on. However, uh, we are lining up times. There's lots of exciting guests coming on, but I thought this was a great opportunity to slide in and also give you some really good knowledge that you can apply. That's very specific, a little bit shorter episodes, but something that you can apply directly to your lifestyle. So I'm going to be talking about the new year, new challenges, and I'm going to give you some new tools. So I'm going to go through a couple of dot points. Once again, not in any specific order, there's going to be about six main tools that I'm going to talk to you about that have helped me able to take my business much further, but not only that, but create more happiness, more balance, and more success in all aspects of life. So these tools, once again, they're not magic, they're not my own, they're very simple, but they're very effective. So for those of you who are motivated and you have got these new big goals, let's go, I'm all for it. I'm not gonna say, hey, yeah, it's the new year, it's just another day, don't go after your goals. Now, it is another day, And I am of the belief that the best time to start is always now. However, I do understand that for some people, it can be the protagonist to change, meaning it can be the fresh start or the clean slate or whatever it is in in your head that mentally gets you onto this next stage in your life. So if this is what it takes to move you to a better place, I'm all for it. So with that in mind, I'm going to give you my best tools, my best experiences from what I've learned within utilizing these, um, I guess, tool systems, processes, mindsets uh, that I've got from other people who are far beyond me and perhaps um, more knowledgeable in all aspects of life because they've been on this earth a little bit longer. So if it's not broken, don't fix it. And if people have already been there and done it, learn from it, apply it. It works. And then, of course, make it your own. So with that said, I'm not going to ramble on about the Academy and everything else because you guys already know about that. I just hope everyone's safe. But if you are watching, listening, I will ask a small favor. And yes, like, comment, subscribe if you're on YouTube and make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts and share this around. Thank you. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy birthday. Right. Let's get into it. Okay. So the first tool is journaling. (gasps) Journaling, I know. When someone said that to me, I was like, no, absolutely not. I could never see myself journaling. Um, But hear me out, hear me out. So to give you a bit of a a synopsis or a bit of a streamlined picture of what happened was in 2018, that's when I really wanted to get my shit together, for lack of better words, and really pursue my business in in full force rather than sort of half-arsing it. And I had got gifted during this time, I was in comp prep, by Chobani Yogurts, of all people, uh, this journal. And it's called The Best Self Journal. And again, I'll link any uh, of these tools 
if um, you guys want to pursue them and actually have a look at these specific ones I've used in the show notes, whether it's the products, whether it's you know a, an application or, or an example of, of the tool I'm talking about, just to give you a little bit more guidance. But if you search these up, they're really easy to find. So I got this journal uh, from Chibani and they said, you know, hey, Alex, we know you're very goal orientated. See if you can, you know, make use of this. We think that you will be able to take advantage of it and, um, you know, all the best. And I thought, oh, that's really nice. That was a really nice gift, handwritten card, not sponsored by Chibani, but we did do some collaborations. And uh, I thought, oh, well, I don't really have the mental capacity now in comp prep because I was very drained. It was coming up to the last few shows. I thought, well, I'll have a look at this and I will tackle it after I finish my competitions into what was going to be coming into the new year or uh, 2019. Anyway, had a plan, decided I really needed to go all in on the training, got a mentor, etc., all of those bits and pieces, and um, sat down with this journal one evening and thought, right, let me get a grip on it. Now, it had a little quick start booklet with it, which was really, really um, refreshing to read because it sort of anticipated the, the mindset that we a lot of us have, which is, I don't really want to sit down and journal. It's going to be too long in the tooth and it's going to take too much time and all of this. And I've got to face all of these things in my head and, you know, and some of it you do, but it pretty much sort of anticipates that and says, Hey, look, we've streamlined it. We have learned from the best of the best. And, you know, we're still trying to refine the process. It doesn't have to be perfect, but here's the basic framework. So you can really just have a quick read and get started rather than sort of, you know, sitting down it's like oh you know how long is this going to take and i don't really know how to do it so best self journal was huge for me um i started off with that it sort of drives you through like a 13 week period you set sort of um these 13 week bigger goals and then you break them down into weekly and daily goals you have habits and routines you have gratitude you have daily quotes in there etc now i've still got this original journal but after that i started to make my own like it says you don't necessarily have to carry on with what they're doing you can customize it so i started to streamline what i really valued in my journaling and what i was really valuing within my days and i wanted to you know take and handpick certain things that were really relevant to me and that i found that were the most useful uh, on a day-to-day -day basis because at some point things were getting a little bit of a burden and it was almost like hmm if this is now getting too hard or too much of a burden and it's not completely necessary swap it out which is a really important concept to understand um, which i could go into but that is more of a different mindset and tool where it doesn't always have to be robust and the same but being able to change and adapt things over time as long as you're getting a better or if not the same result is important know when to quit know when to change know when to adapt don't get caught up in the status quo if it becomes minutia so best self journal um, if you guys want to start it's a great framework and then you can make it your own i've streamlined it now down to the five minute journal which is an app uh, which i used to use it's a derivative or it's i believe it's derived from the best self journal it seems to have a lot of uh, similar qualities uh, so you could do that as well I still put pen to paper uh, from time to time and I still write things down and you can just use that as sort of an empty space to just put your thoughts down on paper which is really really handy a lot of people resist it but if you start it um, it could be the accountability you need uh, to get going and then from there again you can make it your own which I encourage you to do so best self journal daily journaling very 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 um powerful also guys i've said this before success leaves clues so for example if you look at many many individuals who are successful in every sense of the word look at the key things they do every day or regularly there's generally one or two things they all have in common it doesn't mean that you have to do these things again open your mind but usually if they're all doing one or two of these things is a good chance that if you want to be successful you should do it too or you could get some gain from it so think about that okay the next tool is daily gratitude which ties into the journaling in one respect so recalibrating the mind and what do i mean by that so 
psychologically there are patterns in our mind there are many neurological sort of hacks if you like or processes of which the brain works like fight or flight is one of them for an example we've got the central um we've got the parasympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system so you know it's fight or flight when we're in a stressful a stressful situation and there's certain things that we can't sort of alter but if we know how to manipulate them then we can use them to our advantage and as humans we look for patterns so for example if you buy a red BMW, you will notice more BMWs on the road or more red cars. Because you've got one, your, bro your brain is programmed to see your car, identify it. Therefore, you're like, everyone's got a BMW. I didn't notice them before. So when you start looking for the things that you're grateful for in your day, your mind starts to look for things automatically over time that are more positive, that you're grateful for within every day. So if you get up and, and start your day with, hey, this is what I'm grateful for today, and at the end of the day, this is what I'm grateful for at the end of the day, or this is some amazing things that happened, it teaches you to want to reflect on the day at the end, but then also go back and identify the positives, rather than perhaps looking at just the challenges or the things that didn't go well. You know, is the glass half full, or is it half empty, or is it refillable, as my friend says. So perspective is everything, recalibrating the mind is huge. And gratitude as much as, yes, I turned my nose up at it initially and thought, mm, you know, how powerful can that be? It really, really is. So I really encourage you to give that one a go. And it's literally a one minute job at the start of the end of every day. And all of these things are like anything in life. If you if you, you won't have the time, but if you make the time and you're really serious about becoming a better human, because this isn't just about being financially successful. This is about upgrading your life in every aspect because otherwise you will be one dimensional and hollow success is not defined just by financials although it's important um, you can be very rich and very unhealthy and very unhappy so you want to make sure you're building with quality and all of this is the fundamental pillars to success that will help you become a well-rounded full person with a lot of depth a lot of character and um, building from the inside out Okay, the third one uh, that I want to talk about is daily routines. So again, this can tie in with the journaling and it can sort of teach you these daily routines. And these are sort of anchors and mindsets that you can use to start your day to put yourself in a certain state, mindset, mind frame that you can get your tasks done or you can start with the best frame of mind and again it's like standardization so a few examples of this are things like cold showers affirmations a dream board a coffee meditation a workout a song it could be a clothing uh, item that you always wear it can be a smell there's, there's so many things and you want to sort of have a, a little routine in it. You know, it doesn't have to be massive. It can any, be anywhere from sort of five minutes all the way up to 15 minutes. But you've got to start the day by serving yourself. And this is a really salient point I want to stress because most people are too busy serving others and they don't serve themselves. CPR is a great example. You are the most important, then everyone else, then the casualty. It does seem backwards. Women often get this uh, backwards the most and not because... Um, they are careless it's because they're actually even more caring than men uh, it's part of the feminine energy and who they are and they generally have not all but most of them have this natural gift to want to help and serve others and put people before themselves and ultimately that's a primal motherly instinct that come that that's where that stems from so they can often find that over time they get exhausted and burnt out because they are too busy giving and not giving to themselves to therefore be able to give to other people. So it can seem a little bit backwards initially, but again, serve yourself first in the morning, do what you need to do, give yourself five, 10, 15 minutes, half an hour, whether that's going for a walk, listening to a podcast, getting a cold shower, reading some affirmations, getting clear on your goals, doing a bit of a stretching, it doesn't matter what it is, it needs to be routine. Cold showers I love, um, yeah, there's the Wim Hof in there, but it's not necessarily for that. But when I have a cold shower, it doesn't matter where you are on the planet. If you have a cold shower, you're very present when that water hits you. And what it does is it refocuses the mind and it allows me to standardize the start of my day with, hey, wherever I am, cold shower, I'm in, cool, I'm focused. I've got my goals that I read over. 
and uh, have a coffee and I'm in. Uh, you know, it's generally three to five things and again, I've streamlined it and uh, the day starts. And you can even have evening routines as well, uh, which I also do. And I like to add reading in as one of them. I always like to read before I go to bed. Calms the mind and also puts some valuable information into the subconscious before I go into the land of slumber. So just as important there to, um, to have those. I'm just going to get a quick drink. Sorry, guys. I was just checking the audio was still on. Again, hot tips. Lower the baritone with the water. Okay, um, targets, daily targets, kind of like, um, uh, sorry, similar to daily routines, but more specific to work. So for example, have no more than three, A, B, and C, priority, or one, two, and three, and start by eating the frog, metaphorically speaking. So for example, whatever the thing is you need to do most, do it early. If you win the morning, you win the day. You would have heard the quote, you want to win the day before midday. You want to get all the most important things done before 12. If you can do that, you'll be well ahead. These lists can get excessive. So you might have a to action list, which is this is all the shit I need to do. I just need to get it on paper. Everyone's different. And then you might have a to-do list, which is this is actually what needs to get done today. Don't overface yourself because you'll end up overthinking everything and get nothing done, depending on your personality type. So pick three things. Go, hey, I've got to get number one. If I get number two, great. If I get number three, that's phenomenal. But A or number one is the first most important task. And that task should be defined by what is going to get you the closest to where you need to go on that particular day, which leads back to the bigger picture. So reverse engineering those goals. So it might be, hey, I've got to register a business name. I've got to send some uh, paperwork over to my accountant, you know, in whatever it is. It might be, I've got to, you know, reach out to three clients. I've got to um, edit a YouTube video. Whatever it is uh, congruent to what you want to achieve, that's what you need to do. Those daily tasks add up. And as you start ticking them off, this is where the progress happens. That then becomes a habit and it becomes a behavior, which leads me beautifully on to my next point, which is weekly habits. So habits and behaviors. Um, Again, you can put all this in your journaling. I streamline this out now uh, electronically because I do like that. And this is really big for things that you want to improve on, not only from a, again, a behavioral standpoint, but also from more recreational. And what I mean by that is you might go, you know what, I've been wanting to learn Spanish or I've been wanting to play the piano or I've been wanting to go out and get more social. I've been wanting to do yoga, whatever it is. Okay, cool. Weekly habits is to do one Spanish lesson every day, to do one yoga a week, to do two 10 minute sessions on the piano. What again, make it achievable. If it's reading one page or whatever it is, whatever the minimum, um, Uh, barrier to entry is that's what you should start with because if you overface yourself once again you won't do any of it so everyone always goes from zero to 100 they get really ambitious it's like people come on with me they don't do any weights and then they want to do absolutely everything and uh, they you know they want to eat perfect straight on a meal plan it's like guys 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 no let's start with the basics let's start with where you're at right now let's see what pace you can move at that is sustainable and then build it from there so it's the same with the habits so feel free to get creative on those ones and this is a really good way to add accountability and you can even put like a check system at the end of the week and go okay out of the three times i was meant to do say the spanish how many did i got oh, i got two out of three okay let's build it up and if you're constantly failing lower the barrier make the goal easier or really ask yourself is this habit something i want to adopt do i want to get up at seven is it sustainable no six thirty what I, well, you know, it might be to get up at six. Okay, well, let's start with 6.30 or, or, or you know, 6.45 and then work your way back in five to 10 minute increments. Again, it's uh, simple stuff, but it's very powerful. Two last points, one main point and then one last overarching thought. And uh, mentors is uh, another one. So a lot of people talk about these. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this brief because there is a lot that I could unpack about mentors, but fundamentally... If you can get almost like a big brother, big sister relationship, this is idealistic. You may have to pay for mentors and invest. First of all, make sure that they are legit. How do you do that? Main three criteria, in my opinion. Make sure they practice what they preach. Ask what other people are saying about them and ensure that they are getting the results for other people 
authentically. If you can check those three boxes, you'll be in the ballpark. From there, reach out openly, honestly, share something about yourself, tell them what your plan is, ask them if there is an opportunity there, whether it's to catch up once a month, once a week, whether that's a check-in online, whether that's a text, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a coffee. If it's something that you're going to have to pay for, ask, hey, look, I'm willing to you know, spend this much money because of the knowledge or I'm willing to give this. Maybe you can collaborate on something. But if you don't ask, you don't get. You want to pick people that are not always just the same or in the same field as you. You want to pick people that have done or have achieved the attributes and that can give you complementing skill sets and fundamentally hold you accountable, but actually explain and be able to guide and distill the information you need to get where you go. Because there's a lot of people who have achieved success, but they're useless at communicating it. It's like people with really good physiques who might be genetically a little bit more predisposed or you know they've done a lot of things, but they can't actually unpack the science or they can't actually tell you how they got there. They just give you the same plan as they did and that's not going to work for you because they understood what they did, but they didn't understand the principles. So really important to do that. Obviously, be aware of a lot of uh, people who market it because if people are marketing like too much of, uh, hey, like I, I can do this overnight, if it's too good to be true, it usually is. So just have your wits about you. You might even start small in a smaller social circle, someone who's doing that a little bit better and then slowly build up over time to bigger and bigger fish. Nothing wrong with evolving. Nothing wrong with going from one mentor and then moving on to a next or having a few. Have no more than three. Um, because again, you know, you will outgrow certain people and, and not in a, in a, in a egotistical way. It'll just be, Hey, you know, it might be time to now learn from another teacher. Um, when the, the apprentice or the Padawan becomes the Jedi master. Okay. Um, the last thing is, uh, just do it. Just do it. You want a bigger house? Just do it. You want to get fit? Just do it. You want to get this happiness? Just do it. Yeah. That's apparently, you know, for those who know, you know, if not, you're going to think I'm a crazy person. Well, congratulations. I am a little bit crazy. Um, Just do it. It's a great Nike slogan. Um, I I do forget the speaker who kind of used to stand there and do that, which was what the impression I was emulating there. For those of you who are left a little bit uh, puzzled in your car or wherever you're listening. Um, but fundamentally, just do it. Get started. Um, don't procrastinate. It's 2021. You said you were going to do it last year. You said you were going to do it the year before that. Just get it done, all right? Um, ultimately, you're going to fail. That's great. It's called feedback. That's how you learn. You fall over when you're a kid. You get back up. You don't stay on the ground. The metaphor remains the same. So I'm not saying go and jump off into the deep end and do something completely reckless, but sometimes jumping in and just learning to swim can be the best way to go about it. Um, Most things are not as bad as they appear. We suffer more in imagination than we do in reality. And ultimately, if you just get started, that is the hardest thing, getting over the edge. If we can use the metaphor of abseiling, it's always the hardest bit. Once you're over, you're good, you're going. Action creates momentum, momentum creates progress. You will move in a direction, at least you're moving in a direction, and then you can hone and fine tune it. Progress over perfection. All right, I've rambled on with enough analogies there and quotes. Guys, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. As always, as I've said at the start, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and all of that good stuff. Share it around if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to hear any more solo podcasts or any specific information. Lots of guests coming. Thank you for all the recommendations and the people who took the time to get back to me and request guests. I am on it. If there's any of you who want to hear a specific person that haven't already contacted me, or if you think of a new one, send it through. Uh, Links in the show notes. You can email me, or you can reach out through the Instagram, the YouTube, uh, the podcast, whatever. And of course, leave a rating and a review if it's safe to do so, and you're not driving. And there's only one thing left to say, which is, until next time, stay fearless. (laughs) 